Teddy Perkins killed his brother, whacked him. Oh, <laughs> Teddy Perkins. What's up, everyone? I see y'all in the chat already throwing them hearts up in the room. Thank you so much for being here. This is the dissection of Atlanta, season two, episode six. Teddy Perkins, we being random as hell on Thursdays. Let me tell you something. I'm be, I like to be honest with y'all. I like to be transparent. Okay. We tried the APM show. Which it is not 8 a.m. It's not 8 p.m. for everybody. That's number one. Number two, we tried it Thursday nightly, and I will, I, will, I want to have important conversations, but I have to be clear and honest with myself. When people come to YouTube and they come to a person, they want one thing, and learning from Miss Tyra Banks, the Harvard graduate, when you're brand, you gotta do one thing. So I was having movies on Mondays and I was having dope ass, fire ass conversations on Thursdays. And that, that's confusing. I still wanna have my dope conversations. I'll figure out where to put that. I still wanna drag celebrities just a bit and I, I still wanna do that. So, so, we, so we're cleaning up, we're cleaning up. <laughs> we are cleaning up, okay? Y'all love the dissections, y'all show up for dissections. We will do dissections. If you are a Patreon, you will get to see the exclusive streams of the dragging of celebrities, which I love to do. And so many of you are signed up. So many patrons are joining me this Sunday on patreon.com slash justlatasha. We have VIP Boozy Brunch Sunday, which is different than our usual exclusive stream on Sundays. VIP means if you have joined the VIP tier, you get to talk on cam with me. All right, I share that space. I uplift your voices. We all have a talk show style-esque conversation and it is super fun. We do that on the last Sunday of the month. Because it was my birthday weekend last uh, weekend, I skipped it. So we're doing it this Sunday. We will also keep up this month's uh, VIP Boozy Brunch for the last Sunday. So that means we're doing it twice this month. If you would like to see that exclusive stream on Sunday, sign up on patreon.com slash JustLatasha, $5 tier to join and watch, $15 to talk with me and drag these celebrities with me. This weekend, I think we're dragging uh, Joe Budden, Charlamagne the God. Am I dragging Charlamagne the God this week? I don't even know. Uh, we're definitely dragging Tori Langs for being drunk and shooting Megan Thee Stallion. And we are dragging, I think, Odell Beckham and Trey Songs for, for being outed by those, those uh blow up doll podcasters, whatever. We are going in on Sunday. We got a lot to do, okay? You do not want to miss it. You do not want to miss it. You do not want to miss it. I want to say hello to people in the chat. Trini boy, Damien, you know, a, a dedicated, wonderful, wonderful patron. Oh shoot, we got Ray in here. What's up, Ray? Hi, Rose Gold, I saw your comment. Um, when I first set up a, a while ago, you was excited. I'm so excited to have you here. Hi, Kristen. Hi, Kelly. What's up, Kenny? Another patron. Yeah, I'm Kelly's here. We lit. We're going to have a good time tonight, all right? We are going to have a great time tonight. And let me tell you, I've watched this episode several times in the past. And the way it jumped out at me today, I had to like sit and pause and laugh because the layers that revealed themselves to me today in particular, I cannot wait to share with you all. I see y'all, what's up Jazz, what's up A. Barty, another incredible, incredible patron. Uh, what's up Yari, all right, I see y'all. So, Christine, another incredible patron. Look, if y'all not following me on social media, please fix that right here. I am on Instagram at Just Natasha. I am on Twitter at Just Natasha 404 if you are a Black actor in New York City, we will be holding digital auditions next week for my comedy sketch series, Just Latasha's Interactions. Go to the Just Latasha Interactions show page on Instagram and Twitter, I-N-N-R Actions, to find out how you can apply to be in my show filming next month. So excited. I'm so excited. And I just can't hide it. It's going to be so good. Y'all ready? It seems like... I almost, sang, I almost sang the forbidden song. We're not singing that man's song. Fuck R. Kelly. Under the jail. Hi, Iana. I see y'all. What's up, Noni and Heavenly? Let's go. The dissection of Teddy Perkins. This is absolutely one of my favorite episodes of Atlanta. Probably my favorite episode of Atlanta. I could put the stamp on that. Um, it's just brilliant. And it has so many layers. We are starting right about now. Let's do it. Opening shot. 
She's a she's a hoe. She's a freak. Got a different shot every day of the week. It's cool. Opening shots are my favorite. And what is it? It's a white man selling paint. We will come back to it. I wanted to get into Darius and 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 what he's even doing around a white man selling paint. He's obviously in a, a slightly different town than usual. Seems on the outskirts of Atlanta. He's going somewhere. He's got a U-Haul truck, so he's not quite home, right? And with this white man selling paint, uh, he sees a, a Confederate flag, the pride flag of the white South, and he buys a red Sharpie and he hooks himself up, greeting a white woman. You mad? <laughs> feeling swaggy feeling fresh what's up shy podcast shout out to laura my moderator of the channel i see you Khaled's back what's up look shy podcast how you never watch atlanta gear please please Whew. did i say hi to you veronica i want to make sure i say hi to everybody here and so now we on the road everybody get up in a truck so as we're coming to the title shot um Hero Mirai. Let's let's discuss the genius and the man that is Hero Mirai. This man often works with Donald Glover slash Childish Gambino. Tons of his short films, tons of his music videos. I have been a Gambino fan for a long time. I think on the cusp, cusp between high school and college. And uh, Hero has been with Gambino since his very, very, very early projects. And you can easily spot a Hero Mirai direction because he has this signature shot. He loves aerial views or, or cascading views of the road. He, in, in majority of the things that he works on, he will have this shot. This is like his stamp. This is like the Pharrell four beats in the beginning of every song. This is very much a uh, turn that up turbo, like whatever, whatever it is, this is his calling card, that, that road, that shot. So I just wanted to pay attention to this. And while uh, Darius is driving in this U-Haul truck, we hear a song by Stevie Wonder to start off our journey, Sweet Little Girl. Now, let me tell you something, I ain't gonna stay sweet, okay? Oh, see, Laura says, um, Atlanta only broadcast on the BBC and you need a TV license to watch it. A license to watch TV. Wow. Never heard of it. Good look out there. All right. <laughs> Now we have reached the home. We have reached the destination that Darius has been trying to get to, pulls on up. And this is eerie feeling, right? We are inside of a dark house watching Darius. This home is full of darkness. It's giving very much watchful eye. And this home throughout the story is going to be our third character. This is going to be very much integral to the story as the characters are. And who are the characters that we will be spending our next half hour with? hour for us because you know we like to go in teddy perkins ah killed his brother whacked him teddy goddamn perkins uh welcomes darius into this eerie big ass home and let's let's put on our director's eye y'all let's let's color it in let's color it on in right <laughs> let's take a look at that wallpaper right behind teddy perkins a mixture a checkered print and what we say on monday about checkered print it, on a Monday for our Lovecraft country dissections, we said checker print means what? Who gonna say it? I'm gonna see if y'all was paying. First of all, I'm gonna see if y'all was here on Monday. Then I'm gonna see if y'all was paying attention to what I was saying on Monday. Close Lana or Lena. I don't know how to enunciate it. Close. Lena, I did say Mason. You're right. I did say it was inspired by the free, it's Freemasonry imaging. Okay. Khaled, yo, Khaled, I knew he was going to do it. How did I know? I knew Khaled was going to do it. A split of identity. Y'all are right too. I'm not going to play you. Lana, you're right too. Everybody who's saying Masonry is right too. Vicky, you duality, you're right too. Y'all all right. But okay, <laughs> Love Flower said devil. All right, 
you know what? <laughs> but it is a split of identity. And usually when you see yellow, it's about joy. Uh, usually when you see white, it's about naivete. It's about innocence, right? So if you're talking about split of identity between joy and innocence, but look what's right beneath it, right? Totally different texture, that heavy, solid wood. Uh, uh, that darkness, right? So it, it's split everywhere. You have this joy and this innocence weighed down by this, this heavy textured wood, right? And you can see Teddy Perkins where he's at, <laughs> all the way in that darkness. He is all the way in that darkness. And this is how much you can tell just by the visuals alone that adds to the story that you're watching. This happens in majority of the things that you guys are gonna be watching. Um, so there's joy on the surface, there's innocence on the surface, but there's darkness beneath the surface. And we're going to explore those ways. Why, right? And of course, the brilliant, the genius, the legendary uh, Mr. Donald Glover himself playing the Teddy Perkins, who was supposed to, his story was inspired by the life of the Michael Jackson. So let's dive right in. Our colors are right back, y'all. How easy was that, right? Darius, who is joyful, innocent, naive. You see those colors full of light blasting right behind him, but he's sitting on his dark couch because uh, <laughs> there's something coming up from beneath the surface for Darius, right? Whew, we have so much to talk about. Let's talk about this egg. <laughs> and someone put under um, my, my, my YouTube post, I was like, y'all ready for 6 p.m.? They just put that egg. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about this egg, uh, the breakfast of champions, I guess, according to Teddy Perkins. This is an ostrich egg that Teddy also refers to as an owl's casket. Now let's think of symbolism and what words mean. Owl in so many cultures is a symbol of prophecy, a symbol of learning, and most of all, what's widely known for, symbols are known to be wise, right? The wise owl. But if he's eating this ostrich egg, that's called an owl's casket, Casket implies that all of that shit is dead, right? The death of these values. But it is an egg still. And eggs are symbols of fertility, of childhood, of innocence. And what does Teddy do? Destroys it. Lana said, yo, that egg is disgusting. <laughs> Damien said, the first time I watched this, I did not see him standing in that corner. <laughs> you gotta turn your brightness up. <laughs> Teddy destroys this egg, destroys the childhood, destroys the innocence. And look at that red wine sitting right there, right? That wound is in the room right there, okay? So the reason why Darius is even here is because Teddy Perkins has this piano, which Darius is enamored with. It has these really cool colored keys. He went on some um, message board, some anonymous message board to, to track this thing down and communicating with someone he doesn't even know to, to get this piano. And even though it's supposed to be anonymous, Teddy Perkins reveals to him like, oh, you were talking to Sam. Sam is my audio visual woman. Like, oh, oh, we don't, we don't exchange names. Don't tell, don't tell me the name. Oops, my bad. And throughout this episode, we never see Sam. Put a pin in it. We will be right back to that. A Barty said that was nasty. His fingers, he put his whole hand in it. It was so nasty, y'all. <laughs> so they have a conversation here um, where Darius is telling Teddy he's a fan of rap music. Teddy don't like rap music. And he says, all right, it never quite grew out of his adolescence. And he, he sees rap as this immature, insufficient was the word he used. It's an ish, insufficient form of music, not quite developed, he says. Uh, and Darius is like, um, I think not, Jay-Z is 65 years old, so it's, it's quite old. <laughs> rude, he is rude, right? So if this is mirroring the life and times of Michael B. Jackson, uh, Teddy, like Michael, almost despises the childhood. Even on the surface, they may show something else. They really like despise the, the childhood, the innocence, right? And Teddy for the life of him cannot relate to music even being used for fun. It's a tool of mastery. It's a tool of practice, rehearsal, discipline, diligence, fun. 
That don't make sense. Let's bring it, let's bring it one step further. If he hates rap, and we're looking at a, a black man who turned his skin white, who straightened his hair, who chopped off that nose. If Teddy Perkins hates rap, he's also despising a form of a celebrated blackness. Rap is about blackness, about the freedom and the celebration of blackness. And Teddy's like, not at my house. So let's go back again, looking at these colors. We're, we're doing the same thing with the colors, right? That yellow and white up top, that heavy wood brown on the bottom. This is very, very, very intentional. There's two chairs here, one without a person. So this, this implies that someone is invited to the room, but not quite. We can't see, we don't know. Someone else is here, but you have no idea. And just like we were in that dark house, watching Darius pull up in that U-Haul truck, watching him knock, there's this feeling that there's like this invisible watcher. And this is what Hiro Mirai wanted to get this settling feeling that someone's kind of watching these two, especially watching Darius, right? So we're gonna move on, leaning into the Michael Jackson imagery. Um, and Teddy introduces us to his brother who lives in this house, who we haven't seen, right? And these are the pictures of his brother, Benny Hope, making incredible music, um, going to incredible events. You can see here, he's paired with Stevie Wonder, uh, someone who's supposed to look like Barry Gordy, the way Michael Jackson did Barry Gordy. Uh, he, and he, he has this historical black musicianship, this black history, right? And he was, as you can see, a black man. So Teddy speaks of his brother and he says, uh, my brother plays pain better than, than anyone. Benny just played what he knew. So again, not relating to the fun of rap music, like what is that, right? There's pain in music. There's, there's, there's something heavier here with intention. They're intentionally playing with pain. He also says something about his brother, Benny Hope, where he says, yeah, yeah, Benny can't go into the sunlight. You see these heavy, dark curtains. You see there's barely any light coming in. And he says it's because Benny has a skin condition. If you are knowledgeable of Michael Jackson at all, his transition from dark skin to white skinned, he blamed it on his vitiligo, the skin condition where he had to bleach in order to be one color or else he would have these drastic color changes all over. And to avoid that appearance, Michael Jackson bleached his skin. So I question in watching and watching this. I, I like to see layers and symbolism, right? Can Benny not come into the sunlight because of his skin condition? Or is he not allowed to live in the joy and the innocence and the freedom? Right? Does he have to remain suppressed? And Teddy is willing to live in this darkness. He's willing to, to welcome the pain of music because this can make an album, which he refers to as his next masterpiece. This pain fuels him to make the most perfect thing possible. Kenya says, it may be a dissociation with Black culture now than then. Gives me a bit of respectability politics sprinkled heavily with some anti-Blackness. And look, <laughs> you will be right. A, a bunch of people stick their nose up at, the, at that mumble rap because they over here listening to real fill in the blank. A. Barty says, that picks like Robert Townsend and the five heartbeats. <laughs> real, one, real ones know that movie. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Mara Sharice? Welcome. So now we have here Teddy's plan in full motion. Look where that wine is positioned, <laughs> right? Look, look where that egg is positioned. This is Teddy's, and, and we're sitting in Teddy's seat, essentially looking at Darius. We're watching Darius, right? Darius will be wounded. His innocence will be wounded. We have a plan for that ass, right? So a, a beautiful shot here that I really love. Darius is living in the light as his blackest self. 
He's unapologetic. He's black. He listens to rap and he's free. Darius doesn't follow anyone's rules ever. It could be weird. It could be off key. He going to do it. He's going, he shows up with his grills. He's going to do it. Also him being sil in a silhouette like fashion, him turning into this shadow, he's blind to Teddy's plan. So I'm using words very intentionally. Let's, ke let's keep our director eye open. Let's keep our ear open. It's all, we, we, going, we going to do it today. Let's look at the descent of Benny Hope. While we can hear some piano playing, Darius is following this hallway, looking at how Benny has changed over the years. And you can see the transition from a black man, a young black man to an older, faceless, disabled person. So what did it cost Benny Hope to have this celebrity, have this stardom, have this big old mansion in the cut of uh, outskirts of Atlanta, Georgia? It cost him his innocence. It cost him his childhood. It cost him his blackness in order to be this visible and this accepted in this nation. So we can ask ourselves here, what does this all have to do with blackness? What does it have to do with culture? Is it the route that black people have to take to access the American dream to, as you go along, make yourself, make the true identity of yourself disappear? Right? What does it cost to get to get some of that American pie? Let's take a look at the colors here. Yet again, our brown, white, and yellow. Um, Darius being totally in the light and totally surrounded by the color white is totally naive to the danger. And at this point, he sees this empty wheelchair and he sees Teddy rambling in circles about the good old days. Darius was like, y'all the same person. And upon me originally watching this episode, I had no idea that this was, I forgot or wrote it out, but Darius thinks Teddy and Benny are the same person. He thinks Teddy is tweaking, <laughs> Benny doesn't exist. You was the one sitting in that wheelchair playing the piano. You don't want in all the pictures. Why are you talking about this Benny Hope? Like you're goddamn Benny Hope, right? Um. And, and, and even us looking at it, we didn't see two people in any of these photos. We've only seen that one black man throughout the hallway, the photos that Darius is looking downstairs. We even see that there is just one guy. We never saw them at the same time. However, we have Teddy in control of this narrative here, in control of the story of Benny Hope and what had happened. Right, leaning on the heaviness of that that brown wood door, blocking, blocking, uh, blocking, blocking that yellow color from getting in. Right, he's in control of the narrative while performing, being benign, being good, being positive. Right, he has on the white mask. He's performing it. Who else is performing? <laughs> These men were goddamn dying, okay? They were dying. Darius is like, this is Benny Hope. He bleached his skin. He talking about some Teddy Perkins. This the same man. Yo, he's just like Sammy Sosa. Google Sammy Sosa's hat. Literally, if y'all go into Google, Sammy Sosa's hat is already in the uh, search box, sitting there waiting for you because so many people Googled it. And this is the image that comes up, Sammy Sosa's hat. <sighs> Being black in America, to access the American dream, to access safety under success. Under the watchful American eyes, Sammy Sosa changes his skin from black to white. <laughs> Jamie said, damn, Sammy, look, he went out sad. <laughs> he went out sad. And for what? <laughs> for what? Okay. Leaning into that gaze, the white gaze of America, watching, plotting on Darius, on blackness, on a black man for self-righteous gain, right? I love this. Let's do it. I love this. <laughs> this uh, episode came out in 2018, right after Lakeith Stanfield's role as Andre in Jordan Peele's Get Out. Oscar winning screenplay, black director, right? 
And in Get Out, uh, Lakeith, Stans the Lakeith Stanfield's character, Andre, couldn't get out, right? He was hypnotized, his black consciousness, going back into the sunken place, having to uh, put the white consciousness up front to maneuver his black body around white people to be um, used as a sex slave for that white wife, pawned around that party. So in this uh, episode, Donald Glover, Donald Glover and Hero reimagine, reimagine uh, allowing him to get out, right? Don't take my picture. You know, when that flash went off and get out, he went brazy, right? He said, don't take my picture. His face is hidden. He covers his eyes, <laughs> right? This, this is like the ode to like, nah, we're going to go ahead and get, get our boy back. You ain't going out like that. So these are like little, little clues and fun parts of it. Uh, again, Hiro Mirai going into this feeling as if someone is watching. So us as the audience sitting in this dark room, watching outside where the light is, where all the light shines and the flowers bloom and it looks so happy out there. Are we America? Are we Benny? Who's watching? Who is watching from a dark room looking towards a space of light? So this, let's talk about this gift shop, right? Because this is what this room is. It got keychains and, and, and fake awards and, and t-shirts. And Teddy tells Darius that uh, this home will be turned into a museum. And I'm also gonna turn it into a historical site, right? He refers to all this stuff, this merch as trophies. This is what I have, this is what I get. This is my reward for being validated, for being seen, for being accepted. I made it. Look at all my stuff. Good old capitalism, we love it. We love it. I saw this as an ode to Prince, right? Who after the death in his elevator, in his home, became Paisley Park, the museum and historical landmark for America's consumption and commercial, commercialism, the very thing Prince despised. He turned his name into a symbol so we couldn't even pronounce who he was, right? Very private, trying to get the rights back to his music, fighting for ownership and privacy. And in his death, all of that subverted for America's greed and taking. Hmm. Kenya says, I think it's the point of view of America Ooh, enroaching, encroaching on the beauty of Blackness, ready to eradicate it and evil presence. Ooh. Ooh. So that's the vibe. <laughs> that is very much the vibe. And this is Teddy, this is his own house. This is his own stuff. This is his own brother. And he has the same intention, the same intention. Let's get a little dark. Let's enter the darkness, right? Teddy's plan in full effect, leading Darius from the light directly into the darkness, this pitch black room that he turns the light on to shine a light on none other than his father. Yes, this white faceless mannequin who can't speak, who can't see, and his father is anything but a man. He's an idea. Who, it don't even resemble the, the black daddy he had. We seen the daddy. <laughs> but who this white man? <laughs> Why is he in the house? <laughs> right? And we learn from Teddy's story and the inspiration of Michael Jackson's actual life that his father was abusive. But Teddy adores his teachings that made him be a great musician today, that made Benny Hope be a great musician today. Teddy says, he beat us so we can be good at life. This is bigger than music. We're not even talking about music. He beat us so we can be good at life. We were his sacrifice. I will lose my children so they can be well, right? And I have a picture of that, that beautiful shot of Darius that we saw a bit earlier, the inversion of Darius in the light, a black man in the light versus a white man in the dark. That's America, baby. <laughs> That's America, baby, right? 
Jari is standing in the light, a place that Benny Hope is not allowed to go to. You're not allowed to stand in the sun. You're not allowed to stand in the light. You got to stay here in the dark with me and this soon-to-be museum. <laughs> Kill me now. Kill me now. <laughs> Ray said, Harper, who does white man? Paris said, this faceless man representing daddies. All daddies, Paris? <laughs> Callie said, yep. All daddies? Look, let's talk about it. We are, we're gonna lean totally into the theme here. This, this man, this man, this father cannot see. We're leaning into blindness. Darius is blind to the danger. We are blind to Sam, the audio visual person. We're blind to Benny who lives in the house. Teddy is blind to abuse. America blind to this country's abuse and who it's sacrificed to be who it is. Opening with Stevie Wonder, a blind man singing Sweet Little Girl. Mm. Mm. Darius right here asked Teddy, you not mad at your dad? How? How? Right? Remember where we were at the top of the show in that, in that Confederate convenience store. <laughs> the South. The white South is blind to its love for America's darkness. It adores its father. It adores its daddy who made them, no matter, no matter what cost, right? This museum is dedicated to great fathers. And it was this really cool part about uh, this really cool like wordplay right here. He goes, it's dedicated to my father. Joe Jackson, right? It's <laughs> <That's> my impression. <laughs> and Joe Jackson's name was intentionally a place right after he says his father. We don't know his father. We don't know his daddy's, his daddy's name or nothing. But audibly, it sounds like my father, Joe Jackson. Because again, we know that this is inspired by Michael Jackson's real life. And he also names other very intense, abusive daddies for the sake of their great, great child. Uh, children, Serena Williams' father, Marvin Gaye Sr., who shot Marvin Gaye down dead, Tiger Woods' father. So I want to ask y'all, here's our first audience question of the night. <laughs> let's, get let's get complicated. Let's do it. Audience question, why is he naming abusive Black men? Why is he naming abusive Black men? Men, we're gonna get there. Cali, Cali was like, <laughs> Cali said, "Not that I want you for the U.S. Army picture in the corner." We're gonna talk about it. <laughs> we're gonna talk about it. Hi, Kalavna. Who also says another abusive daddy, Emilio Estevez's dad in the Breakfast Club. <laughs> Demon said, "My dad is super chill." I don't ever see him upset. My daddy too. Do you think it is a reason here, y'all? My audience question that that uh that we're naming all of these black men as the abusers. Uh oh, y'all, y'all. I know y'all not skirting. I know y'all not skirting around the question. Don't act what I ain't asked. What I ain't asked. Let's see it. I want, I want them brains on. I want them director's eyes is. I want everything on tonight. Where we at? <laughs> where we about to think at? <laughs> that me? Right there, that's me? That's you. Where we about to think at? A Barty says, because their abuse led to the greatest Kenya said, it gives me an idolation of abuse to submit to the wild part of blackness, almost like black people deserve the pain of abuse, white supremacist ideology. Mm, Kenya be going in. <laughs> Kenya be going in. Trini Boy says, because they push their kids to greatness. Mm, 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 mm. Let's hypothesize, nothing's right or wrong. Let's hypothesize. 
Vicki Charles says, we never want to acknowledge their wrongdoings because it's seen as anti-Blackness. Jalees, white supremacy, patriarchy, narrative to deflect. <laughs> Ray says, skirt, skirt. <laughs> RB says, maybe because his dad was black and he used abusive black dads as valid validation for why his dad was abusive, maybe. Here's my hypothesis and nothing is right or wrong. We just like to think. Khaled says, black people's success usually comes from hardened backgrounds and abuse. And I'm gonna lean into that a little bit, Khaled, cause look, the way we beat our kids, <laughs> the way we beat, our kids and we and and the cursing and the harsh treatment and expected to love and idolize our parents after they've had that strong hand on us i got beat i picked my own switch and i love my daddy down you hear me and and it's so much so integral to black culture to to go through that sort of violence almost as children and we're just like well we were supposed to be good where do we get that from? Where do we get such violence from? And someone said it here, um, Jalees, who are like the white supremacy and the patriarchy, um, learning to be black bodies. Harpa, who taught us that? Act right or I'ma whip you. Who taught us that, right? This black consciousness and the man of Teddy Perkins with this white face staring up at this faceless white figure with idolization in his eyes because of the because of the abusive history. That's just what I think. I, I you know what I mean? I could be wrong. That's just what I think. Look, okay. So get back to Khaled's question. What the hell is Uncle Sam doing in here? Let's lean into it. Let's do themes. Let's do layers. Let's do it. Let's talk about capitalism. Let's talk about patriotism. Let's talk about Uncle Sam, AKA the great white father. Uncle Sam, recruiting you for the army. You can do it. Love America, love your daddy. Everything America does, no matter how dark, is for the delusion of the country's self-righteousness and goodness. USA, we're number one. You know how ugly you are? I bet you don't. America has destroyed and sacrificed so much to make itself the best. <laughs> Where? <laughs> Where? And what did it cost to make itself the best? It cost blackness <laughs> to uplift the name and the idolization of white supremacy. It cost us to make them great. Of course, they putting them red hats on. We had to die to make them great. And like Teddy, Americans adore the abuse of America, idolizing America. Why is Uncle Sam in the corner? Why is Uncle Sam in the corner? <laughs> Sam, the audio visual person who anonymously contacted Darius. Oh, we met Sam, all right. You thought we didn't. We met Sam, all right. It's Uncle Sam. Contacting Darius, recruiting Darius. We met Sam, the invisible watcher sitting in that chair. America the Great. Sam is the person in control of the public image and the narrative. Sam got them, Sam got them both wrapped around their finger. This black man walking into this house for that goddamn piano and this black man wearing his white face in control of all of it. Mara says, what about love leading to greatness? Can we? It'd be cute. It'd be cute. We met Sam. And after Darius has met the father, we are starting, he is starting his journey on his loss of innocence. You see them switch places, Darius sitting in the dark, Teddy standing in the light, headless, faceless. The, the, the mindless control of white supremacy. Darius finally setting eyes on his piano, everything that he came here for, 
everybody's like, what's up with these colored keys? These, this is representative of childhood innocence. And Darius, of course, is sitting right next to it because he is full of this pure, beautiful innocence. He's just full of it. And he wants to bring this home. There's blood on the keys. The thing that he seeks has cost someone else their childhood. Someone else, someone else's childhood was sacrificed and lost at this piano, right? I don't even know why he touched the blood. <laughs> I don't know why he touched the blood. <laughs> Callie said, wrap it up. Episode is over. The code has been cracked. <laughs> Damien says, you don't understand. <laughs> I would have said, screw that piano. <laughs> It has been sacrificed, his childhood, everything that this greatness for to be this musician has cost. I just want to remind, remind y'all that Prince died in his elevator in his home. This aerial shot, it, it, look, it almost makes the piano look like a casket. Darius is trapped with this huge piano in this very tight space, that number one bleeding red. But we didn't stop at the first floor, did we? We was just trying to get out. Like We was just trying to get out. It brought us down to the basement. Let's let's put our director eye on yet again. Let's put it on. Leaning back into these colors, we see yellow, we see red. The only place where joy can exist in this house is in the basement, suppressed, buried. We see that red. There's a wound here. There's danger here. Who at it? Betty Hope who Darius at this point still believes is Teddy playing goddamn games. You upstairs, you downstairs, you upstairs, you downstairs, little weirdo. But Benny Hope is hidden in this basement. His salvation, go get the gun in the attic. His salvation, what can free me is back upstairs. Now let's bring, let's bring it back to the house being the third character. If this is like Get Out, you can imagine this home representing Teddy's consciousness, right? When you access your consciousness from the sunken place, when you go upstairs to the consciousness from the sunken place, that's where you can free yourself. Not Letty's house. Uh-uh, uh-uh, not Letty's house. <laughs> Paris said everything he wants is blood stain. Look, if you're trying to get out from the sunken place, you gotta go up right? You got you to gotta reach your consciousness to get free. So, so Darius is like, well, this man is just trying to kill himself. Go ahead and get your own goddamn gun. I, yo, take care of that. I'm going to go. Let's go. But Teddy got trapped in. Teddy put uh, the Benny Hope vehicle directly behind the U-Haul truck blocking Darius from leaving. He has to come in, ask for permission to go. But look at this shot. This is an omen. This right here is an omen. Look at that invisible seat staring at Darius. Oh, you could try to get out. <laughs> you could try to get out if you want. <laughs> Look at that rug. Blood will be spilled by the invisible watcher. Look how it just leaks out from that red chair, right? The angle that Darius is in, sunken, sunken in that, that woods, in that sunken place, away from the joy, away from the innocence. This also um, mirrors this book uh, called The Invisible Man. And in the, the Invisible Man is a novel about a black man whose color renders him invisible to white culture. White people don't got a culture, but to white culture. A black man is invisible to white culture. I don't know, what would you have to wear to be um, invisible to white people? Maybe like another white face? I don't know. I'm just guessing, right? You'd have to have like a face like Teddy. You have to paint it and Sammy Sosa in order to be white to white culture. Like you can blend in now, maybe. But I want to ask y'all who y'all think is in that empty seat. Lana said red chair, blue chair. Hold on to it. Remember it. Remember it. Who y'all think is in that empty seat?
Katie making an incredible point, quick thought, but that piano was supposedly free. <laughs> that piano had no price. You were absolutely right. But uh, they continue, ain't nothing free. Look at the cost of this piano. <laughs> Look what it's costing Darius to get this free piano. Great point, Katia. Katia, thank you so much for adding that point. Genius. Genius, genius, genius. Who is in that invisible red chair? Kalovna guesses the daddy. The faceless, the faceless, formless daddy, the father. Is y'all done? That's it. The daddy. Y'all better eat y'all food or else y'all can't go to bed. Our vet says Teddy. Heavenly says Uncle George. <laughs> Darius. I'm guessing it's Uncle Sam. I'm guessing it's the eyes of white supremacy. I'm guessing it's the watchers of America. Put your own person in. Oh, God. I, I can't. We're back in the room where we watched uh, Darius first take, take his exploration within the gift shop that will become a museum. <sighs> But something is in the room this time where we are originally standing. Something is in the room this time where a video of Benny Hope rehearsing with the abusive father is playing. And if this house is acting like Teddy's consciousness, this is a suppressed memory. Look at him stepping into that room and stepping into that wound, right? He's accessing the wound of the mind, the subconscious wound of the mind. Look at all that red. We ain't even see. No rooms in here colored red. Watching this video directly, this is the location of Benny slash Teddy's trauma. We have found it. We have found it. And Teddy's right here with his white face watching this trauma with love. Daddy being harsh, slapping the piano, hitting his hands, right? But we met Benny, the faceless blue mask who wants to kill it. So Teddy's upstairs, conscious, loving this trauma. Benny's downstairs, subconscious, wanting it to die. Want this whole damn thing to die. Go get the gun upstairs, free us. Oh, well, we found the gun. <laughs> we found the gun. And if Teddy is Benny, this was all an elaborate trap. Yeah, I was downstairs telling you to go get the gun. Oh, what, this gun? <laughs> Sit your ass down. And Teddy tells Darius, I choose you. Darius, your innocence will be Teddy's sacrifice. For what? To gain more? To have more? To validate him? I estimate at this point, Teddy was Sam from the message boards. <laughs> Who the hell is talking to Darius and setting it all up? We don't know, Sam is invisible. We have Teddy versus himself, Benny versus, versus himself, Teddy versus Benny, we don't know. This abuse, this trauma created this white mask floating around with this black consciousness for the access to success and the American dream, right? Woo. I wanna, I wanna bring it back. Let's get deep, <laughs> let's get deep. You know I'm nosy, I'll be paying attention to all the detail. You know I'm nosy. I'll be paying attention to all the detail. I saw some books in the back, so I, I wanted to see what was going on. We have the Great Divide, which I, which I estimate represents Teddy's consciousness. 
We have the Dimwits Dictionary, which is a book. It is a compilation of thousands of overused words and phrases and alternatives to them. It's the ultimate tool for writers who seek to weed out common, tired language and replace it with crisp, concise writing. Now, I originally thought that this just meant this is this is uh, Darius's innocence, the Dimwits Dictionary. Because I don't believe Darius is stupid at all, but he's innocent. He just doesn't know. And he don't know what he don't know. But it's not. It's about the overused words that writers use to, to be different. I think this is the writers just straight up bragging. Y'all go ahead and tell them slave stories. Y'all go ahead and tell them white versus black stories. Y'all go ahead with, the, with these black tales about white down trodden. We're going to, we actually going to flex that same theme on you. We're going to do it like this. I think the writers just bragged. <laughs> we did what y'all did a million times, but actually look how we're doing this. And it's going to be like the first time you ever seen it. I think the writers flex. Uh, Donald Glover, add me to your writer's room. I'm just going to go ahead and ask. Donald Glover, Stephen Glover, add me to your writer's room. Season, uh, season three and season four, please. Add me to your writer's room, please, quickly. <laughs> and I got And I got the spec ready. What's up? And I got the spec ready. What is up? Let's do it. We also have sandwiched between two books uh, with the author's name, Stuart Woods. And Stuart Woods is an author from Georgia. I'm, my enunciation is so crazy. Stuart, Stuart Woods is an author from Georgia. <laughs> and right in between those two books with his name on it is another book in red called Grassroots. And Grassroots is a novel about a White House staffer by the name of Will Lee who becomes involved in the trial of a young man for a brutal race-related murder. Will Lee is balancing between national celebrity and career-ending notoriety. Remember that picture of Benny Hope we seen in the beginning? I put it, I put it right here. Remember that picture of Benny Hope with that black man with the glowing eyes at the White House? It all comes together. <laughs> it all comes together, right? A black man on trial for, for a, a race-related murder. Whew, they don't miss a beat. They don't miss a beat. Thank you for that prayer, Damien. Thank you for praying for it. Let's do it. I'm getting in that writer's room. <laughs> so with the gun to his back, Darius is walked to this invisible chair, becoming the sacrifice Teddy needs. Red, as we see, Darius is the chosen target. The yellow and white, as we've seen, Darius's innocence is long behind him, a bit, a bit dim, dimmer now, a little bit dim lit, right? And we think of white supremacy, how America has brainwashes people through violence, forcing people to be, forcing black people to be sacrificed in death and assimilate in white supremacy. Darius being forced to death as a sacrifice. Teddy Perkins assimilating in white supremacy, performing the violence for, doing the job for Invisible Daddy, the Invisible Watcher. Teddy becoming the abuser, right? So Darius has an honest conversation with this man, like, look, you don't have to repeat the cycle. Mara asked earlier, what if you've seen love? Like Stevie Wonder, what was perceived as a setback for Stevie was used, he used it as a superpower for his talent and his blackness. Locks in his head, dark skin showing up, just as successful, just as visible. Oh, my favorite quote of the episode, Stevie was blind, but he wasn't blinded. Ah, he saw through his music. You have a choice. You have a choice to choose your freedom, to choose love, to choose your superpower, or succumb to being the victim of white supremacy, becoming the abuser and following the cycle of trauma, recreating the trauma. Freedom, Darius, <laughs> the, the, the abuser, the cycle of trauma, Teddy. Damien says, hi, thank you so much for that super chat, Damien, always holding me down in the super chat. Thank you so much. You have a choice. Look at these two choices we got. 
Y'all said it. Lana said it. She saw the, she saw the blue chair. This is it. Symbolism. Benny's alive. Annie's a different person. Kills Teddy. Kills himself. Blood spilled on the floor. Red versus blue. And we remember that moment in Get Out too, right? That that gardener, the housekeeper, the the runner. Once he got his consciousness, killed himself to be free. It's giving very much matrix, red pill versus blue pill. You're split of the consciousness. Do you have a choice in your single body? Do you want to choose imprisonment or freedom of the mind? Red pill, blue pill, which one you want to have? Which one? A Barcy says, now I got to go back and rewatch all these episodes with a different eye. Do it. Do it, Khaled, with the iconic quote, die a hero or live long enough to become the villain. Look. <laughs> That's it, you always got a choice. Red pill, blue pill. Wrapping it up here, the choice. Darius, after all he's been through, all he's seen, innocence removed, blinders off, chooses life. You see how easy that could be? He chooses life. The piano that he came all the way here for stays with the police. He has to leave his innocence behind, but he's still out here. He's still gonna move forward. He's still lit. And on his drive off, we have the second Stevie Wonder song to open and close the episode, this time from Sweet Little Girl and on that drive off, Evil. This is the full circle of innocence murdered. Stevie Wonder sings Evil on the way out. I'm sorry, piano. You couldn't make it. Here we go. <laughs> Y'all ready to flip your wig? Because this is what we're waiting for. Y'all ready to flip your wig? Black folk, who stole your innocence? I want to see that chat light up because. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't here to brag, but <laughs> Black folk, who stole your innocence? <laughs> and guess what? White people going to do what? Stay mad. You're mad. We're Black. We're alive. We love each other. We love ourselves. And we ain't going nowhere. What's good? <laughs> What's good? <laughs> Look, <laughs> Myra says, don't make me cry, child. <laughs> Look, <laughs> blood on the piano, the sore of America. The white devil, no. <laughs> Everybody put white devil in the chat. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this has been the dissection. <laughs> this has been the dissection of Atlanta, the Teddy Perkins episode, season two, episode six. We are we are doing it, we are doing it. We are black, we are happy, we are proud, we are in love. This is why I have y'all throw hearts in the chat on the way in. It's a love room, F all that pain, F all, all that madness, right? Please follow me on social media, on Instagram at JustLatasha, on Twitter at JustLatasha404. Follow my sketch comedy series show page on Instagram and Twitter at Interactions, I-N-N-R Actions. If you are a Black talent located in or around the New York City area, please go to the show page, the Interaction show page, to find out how to audition to be on the show. It's gonna be hella fun, hella funny. Do that. Whew, where are we? Patreon. We are doing VIP Boozy Brunch this Sunday. If you're not a patron, you're gonna be missing us drag. Joe Button, Odell Beckham, Trey Songs, Tory Lanez, all of them, we're dragging them live on Sunday. Be a part of that conversation. And some of my patrons get to join me in that conversation, all right? Get on over there and, and join and watch. Uh, and uh, we'll be back Monday, right here, General Admission YouTube channel with the Lovecraft Country episode five, dissecting live at 6 p.m. Welcome to new Thursday nights, okay? We're doing it, we're doing it. Thank you so much, Vicky. Ray says, this was too much for my little heart. I'm never coming back to these. <laughs> okay, you said that blue-eyed devil. 
<laughs> Look, thank you guys so much, so much, so much. I love y'all so much. Heart in the chat on the way out. You are my heart. I love you so much. Thank you guys. See you Monday. Patrons, I'll see you Sunday.